I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. This is an Inkscape tutorial I wanted to make for a year. I wanted to do graffiti. It's a type of personal expression. It's a form of expression, so there is no right or wrong way. We're going to make this deconstructed text. This actually says Iron Echo, and I'm breaking it down into easy, repeatable steps. So you can follow along to make this. There's an infinite number of different backgrounds you can do. I will show you at the end how to do this paint splatter here. And that's how I structured this whole tutorial, based on steps, doing different tools and techniques along the way to make this. So let's begin. The first thing we'll do is get on the same page, literally. This is the A4 template. So if you go to File, Document Properties, the default template is A4. We're not gonna use the page, but if you follow along, at least you'll be at the same scale. And one of the problems in the earlier iterations of this tutorial was I was starting with actual text. And when you modify text using the nodes, it just still looks like the original font or just gets messy. And something I learned way back when I was in school for architecture was sometimes if you can find the tools at your disposal to a limited set, it releases creativity. So I said to myself, let's begin with simply a rectangle. We'll go to path object to path and that will change it into something we can see each of the independent nodes. If I hold control, I can drag one of the corners up and the other corner down. I'll give myself this shape and one more with the circles and ellipses tool. I'll hold shift and control and make an even circle. And that's it. We'll do this parallelogram and circle to create my stylized text, which will start us off as the base for our graffiti. This shape will be our I. Control D will duplicate it. It will also begin the R. I need to cut out the hole. Control D will duplicate this. Down here, the color ribbon. Yours may not be this gold to brown. You might be on the default, something like this. I like gold. The duplicated circles on top, I'll change it by clicking on the gray. Holding shift and control will scale it in place. One of the most basic things you can do in Inkscape is work with vector shapes. I'll select the big circle, hold shift, get the small one, go to path, difference, and it knocks out the center, which makes the top of our R. Grab the post, control D, and I can turn it. See how it looks over here. These are the directionals. I might want to flip it. Even though we're limiting ourselves to the two base shapes, I can still modify them. If you double click, you see the nodes. Bring this node in, and I want to extend the top here. Click and drag over both nodes. Up in the top, you'll have this icon for the transformation handles. If yours doesn't show the handles, you got to click it. I'm actually not going to use them. I'll just use the arrow key to make that taller or shorter. Let's alternate the colors between each letter. I'll duplicate the O because we're going to use this several times. Select each component of your letter R, path, union. That makes it one whole thing. Change it to gray. The O, first I'll duplicate it because I'll use it again. Double click and see all your nodes. If you hold shift, it'll allow you to only get the inside nodes. Here's why I mentioned the handles. Holding shift and control will let you drag the middle part tighter. I used a little bit of artistic license on the N. Rick here from the edit bay. I wanted to do a time jump to speed things up. You'll see here each of the additional letters was made using the shape of the parallelogram and the circle, cutting out the C, making the H. Finally, the O. I wanted to move on to the more interesting parts of the tutorial. Now we can group it all together. This time when I do the path effect, it will all become the same color. So path, union. <laughs> it's jumbled up now, but that's what I want. I want to have all my deconstructed text together. Hit the eyedropper, we'll make it a base of blue. Next step, we'll bring it down to do a dynamic offset, go up to path, and you'll see they have a dynamic offset, linked offset, and these are good in a pinch, but if you go to path effects, there's a more robust way to do it. Path effects menu comes up, hit the plus. The choices always seem to move around where they are. You want this one right here, offset. I think I'll make a copy of this just in case we have a crash or something goes amiss. Down here, you see join. These are all the different ways you can create an offset, but we want miter and you say nothing happened. Well, go to edit paths by node, look for this orange circle, drag it up and that creates your offset. The blue line is what you started with. You can go as crazy as you want with it. We'll keep it pretty tame and go right there. Make it black and bring back our text. Bring it down to the next step, which is gonna be motion. So the motion will make this depth. It's a way to do it easily. Take a copy aside. It's not gonna work unless you take this thing that you made with the dynamic offset and go to path, object to path. Now we can go up to extensions, generate from path, motion. And in the pop-up box, let's try 35. 
120. 35 is the depth it will pull, and it's going to pull in the direction based on whatever angle you tell it. Live preview. There it is. It's tough to see. I'll hit apply. Click on the top part. You can take it off. And if you zoom in, something that might bug people, you can see these lines in between the motion. The easiest way to get rid of that is to add a stroke. This time I'll go to fill and stroke menu, stroke, try 2.5. We'll make the stroke black. See how that took care of it? Thank you. Let's piece it all together. We've got our motion area, the offset, bring back the actual color plate. And I wrote add gradient just to remind myself. On the fill and stroke, for fill, if I have the top plate selected, it's on this solid color. If you hit linear gradient, it will use that solid color as the starting point for the gradient blue, and it fades out into transparency, which is why you can see the black here. Change this end of the gradient. Down here is your alpha, your transparency. Now there's no transparency. Instead, we'll lighten that side. I do love the new gradient feature for Inkscape 1.2, but the old way, if you click on this edit gradients, you see this bar. This square is the start starting point. I will drag it down here and this side correlates to the circle. Very subtle difference and you can play around where it goes but we'll just have it be slightly lighter on top, slightly more full color in the bottom. Get a copy of this. Come on down to the next part. Brush highlights. If you saw the last video, we did a rush dedicated <laughs> tutorial on how all this works. Here's the cliff notes. Choose pencil tool and you'll see mode, the first mode here smoothing be on 25 the default will be none you want to go down to bend from clipboard it's going to use whatever we have saved to the clipboard as our brush as an example this is our brush that we made i'll make a new one for you right now copy that puts on the clipboard grab the pencil click and drag and you see your brush stroke pretty simple delete that the way that i make my brushes i take the bezier pen tool i start with the shape and i will push the space bar to stamp out many iterations of this that's good collect all of it path union this is your custom brush one more thing to note you need your brush stroke to go from left to right because when you drag the pencil it will always start this way if you make your custom brush and it's like this up and down when you draw it will make it up and down. You go crazy. So don't do that. There's more to it, but that's the quickest way I can explain it. And I want to go quick. I'll leave this one here. This is the shape I made beforehand, before the tutorial. Let's scale it down to there. Copy that to the clipboard. Go back to pencil. I did gloss over the smoothing. The higher the number, the more correction Inkscape will do. If I make the smoothing 50 and you have a little bit of a jagged, it'll smooth it out for you. That's what we want here. I want to make a nice arc and keep it nice and smooth. Just like that. That arc looks good, but it's too thick. If you go back to pencil, there's a couple ways you can change the scale. One on scale, you can move it to 1.5, make it thicker, 0.75. But I prefer to go to Edit Paths by Node and take this little node and you can scale it visually right about there. I'll grab this thin brush. We'll do this part of the C, top of the I, little O. Reduce the smoothing back down to something like 25 because I do want some jaggedness now, like the back of the E. It's kind of fun, the brushing. That's good. You get the picture. Let's grab everything, control D, and bring it down to the details. Looks like I had changed some of the paint. Easy enough to change. If you don't like it, delete it. I think I still have it on the clipboard too. There you go. I marked down definition, glare, and starburst. These are easy details. For definition, you can't really tell there's an H here. All I did was create two shapes that will be the negative space of the H. I'll pop it in there just as a visual cue, and you and I will know that that's the H. In a similar way, for glare, I've got this shape right here, just two parallelograms. I think this gives it more of like a modern racing stripe type look, and we can cheat by using it over and over again. Knowing me, I think I would do a time jump there to slap those on in place. Almost forgot about the starburst. This is a shape made simply by doing four triangles with a circle on the inside. Group it as one. I'm reducing that so it's tiny. This next tool called the spray can tool is going to shoot out that object and it will do it based on the modification area up here. So for width beyond 10, amount 50, rotation 50, scale 25, scatter. We want one for now. Focus one. And you want this eyeball open, eyeball closed, all selected. And this is what it does. Let's make it big so you can see it. If I have this big thing selected, it'll shoot out my starburst. Control Z. 
And when you select it as a small object, you can spray it out, to either look like overspray or some type of metallic starburst. Just a little detail. Group everything here. Control G, bring it down for cracks. I needed to include this, not just for the artistic value, but because it is rare that we use the eraser tool. It doesn't seem to work that well. I don't think people like it that much. Here's why I have an object. I want to erase part of it. It destroys the whole thing. But there are certain applications where it does work well. Get off of the first mode and move over to the second mode. Cut out from paths and shapes. Now, if I go back to that circle, same eraser, but on mode two, it's a little bit more intuitive, more like you're used to when you drag the eraser over something, it will cut out that part. It also creates all these nodes, which is what makes it crash a lot. Now, with that in mind, you could easily draw your cracks with paintbrush or another pencil of some sort, but let's try the eraser to make our cracks. So it won't cut out from a group. I need to isolate the blue. I know this whole thing is selected, not just the blue because under fill, it says unset. I'll keep clicking till I see it come up. Now I see fill blue, which means I have what I'm calling the face plate. With that selected, I can go back to my eraser and erase out some cracks. That was a width seven, take it down to a four. I try to imagine where things would actually crack, probably at the joints, and go about as you please using that eraser. Moving on, there's a million different backgrounds you can use. I'll show you an easy one that uses the path effects miter clip. But before we do that, why don't we add a slight blur? I'm on the fill and stroke menu. I have everything grouped together. Let's type in a 4.0 blur. It's very subtle, but it just takes off some of the bite. I happen to have saved an original. Remember we did that motion? This will work really well as a background. Let's drop it to the back. We'll go to path, path effects. Make sure you're on miter clip, edit paths by node, and now when you expand it, it's coming out all jagged based on each of those pieces of the motion that we made, which I think looks pretty good for something like a background. Because we want to manipulate it now without having this live path effect attached to it, we'll go to path, object to path, and it goes away. It's pretty interesting as is. Why don't we flip it, see if it looks better any different direction. That was kind of cool. Maybe we'll go with this for today. We're deviating from the plan, but I want to put a gradient on it. So on the fill and stroke tab, I have it selected. I'll click over to linear gradient. First, I'll go to edit gradients and we'll make it go from full opacity up top down to fading away. And on my slider, I actually want this to be partially transparent also. So on the alpha, I'll reduce that down to 50%. Drag this one in, make it pink, maybe hot pink. I don't like these stroke lines showing up, so we'll go over to the stroke tab, X out of that. Other side of the gradient, let's drag this in. This side can be blue. Let's go bigger. Is it too bright though? Do we reduce the opacity on that background? 80%, last step, the bonus. And I have a question for you. Because it's easy and I wanna see this thing through, I'm gonna add the paint splatter effect very quickly. But do you want to see a deep dive video on paint splatter? If that's of interest, let me know in the comments. If it's a waste and no one's gonna watch it, let me know in the comments. It's easy to do with the spray can tool. Just like before, it's gonna spray whatever you select. So I made this blob. That's a drop of paint. I want this size and on the paint can tool, the first mode is spray copies of the initial selection. That's perfect for this activity with 10, amount 50, rotation 50, scale 50, scatter 10, focus one, eyeball open, eyeball closed, all selected. I'll choose this size paint splotch and hit the spray can tool, make our first center where the paint like dripped out first. Grab the second one. Sometimes paint comes out like in an arc and take that third one, spray this everywhere. That's it, that's paint. I could do a whole tutorial on it if you want to have a more in-depth paint activity. Also, I always do path simplify because that warps it some more. Up in hierarchy, I'll drop it on top of the background beneath our artwork and we can stamp it out a couple times. You can actually also spray the spray. If that's selected, I can spray the spray. See, let's just do that make it a mess, group everything. Slide this into place and change the transparency. Let's cheat, we could take this one. 
This I'm gonna slide underneath for a little bit of grunge. I'll hit the space bar to stamp it out. I think that'll do for today. We made some graffiti. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Something I'm working on privately. I feel good, I can now share it with you. See you next time.